you know, I am not a smart man. And after reading all the things that I've been reading about the Eagles today, I am even dumber than I was this morning. That's right. It is getting harder and harder to calculate the calculations of the cornbread because I can't do math and I can't remember numbers. I'm getting really dumb. And I'm already dumb. But that's just the way it is. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here for my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Let's get open for business here. and Let's wake up the football gods. You know, this video here this morning, I'm actually not going to talk about the Cowboys and stuff. This is the first day of the offseason. We've got so much drama and things. I'll, you know, you know, I do a lot of videos. I do a lot of videos. And I come to find out that they're actually trying to recommend that you don't do so much editing. It's like, bro, I've been doing that my whole YouTube career. It's like I'm a one take guy. I take that take. I put it up and people tell me, yo, your ass is hanging out. Uh, your your volume is not there. Your hair is jacked up. You know, I, you, you got food on your shirt. But hey, it's real. It's the real Mark Holmes. Because if you were here at the Man Cave, you'd probably see all of that and more. Because this is realism. And realism is dealing with the Super Bowl and seeing what happened in there. It was so nice, cause see, you guys don't understand. You see me here on YouTube, okay? I am an open book. People know my Facebook page, they know my Instagram, they know me on Twitter. They know my email address. And my email box has been flooded since the Cowboys lost to the Green Bay Packers by 49er fans. They've been sending me pictures of Brock Purdy and things and telling me how much the Cowboys suck. You know, we're going to the Super Bowl and blah, 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 blah. But you know what's kind of funny, though? <clears throat> it's kind of like there's a curse on the 49ers. There's a curse. I was there in New Orleans when it was brother against brother. And the lights went out, and they lost that one. I wasn't there then when they lost the other ones to Kansas City. But here it is. San Francisco's been stuck on the five. Now, we're tied at Super Bowl, Bowl uh, uh, going. We both have five wins and three losses. And the funny thing here is, and I know the Cowboys have sucked terribly. We have not gotten it done. And I blame that as much on Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones as I do the players. But Kyle Shanahan can't seem to get over the hump because you might not realize that he was the offensive coordinator for Dan Quinn in Atlanta that had the biggest meltdown in Super Bowl history. And now he's lost to Pat Mahomes twice. And now you're actually questioning, questioning taking the ball in overtime. Because see, here's the thing that happens with you. This is kind of crazy with the new rules. Thank Josh Allen <clears throat> for the change in rules. They said, oh, it wasn't fair because Josh Allen didn't get a chance at the ball. And Pat Mahomes went down and scored and blah, blah, blah. So they made it so that way each team could get the football. And this is where there was a lot of questions in my mind that were going on because each team gets a chance. So even if you score a touchdown, the game's not over. The other team has a chance to tie it up or go for two and take the win, which brought into me another question was because San Francisco took so much time off the clock to get the field goal. I said, what happens if Kansas City has the ball and they're still like first or second or third down and the clock runs out? Do they go ahead and just not, I mean, why, why even have the clock? Does the game end right there? Now, Kansas City did score the touchdown just before the clock expires, so I don't know the answer to that. But in essence, by you taking the ball first, Kansas City knew what they had to do. They had to at least get a field goal, a touchdown, wins it. But since, <clears throat> but since you know that if we don't score or keep the drive going, 
the game's over, then you basically have an extra down. Fourth down doesn't matter. It's 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 it, it, you know you're not going to punt and play defense. You have got to go the whole way, all the way. So that kind of gave uh, the the Kansas City Chiefs a little bit of a advantage there. So now you have to wonder because you know I feel bad that the Cowboys didn't get to the Super Bowl. I, I, I do. I honestly feel bad. But I sit here <clears throat> in my mind and I look at what we've seen San Francisco do to get there. Because this is where we really need to understand, y'all. We've seen this now year after year after year. Because as the Cowboys had a problem last year running the football, it wasn't as good as we would like to have had. We got rid of one piece of our running game. Because I want you to understand this. Listen to me real quick, quickly. You looked at it and said, our running game's not enough. And then you let go of Zeke Elliott and you didn't bring anybody else in. Except an under an undersized rookie late in the draft. You got rid of half of the bad running game that you had. And then you said, I need you to make up for all of it. In which case, he, what he did good went downhill and the production went off a cliff. So we did that. San Francisco, in that same time period, goes out and gets the best running back in football in Christian McCaffrey. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> we go out and we end up getting Anthony Barr to help us on our defense. We did trade for Stefan Gilmore, which was a big, big benefit. In the same breath, you saw the 49ers go out there and get Hargrave for their defensive front. They went out there. They got Chase Young. Oh, and we let go of Randy Gregory. They got a Randy Gregory. And say what you will about Randy Gregory. He was making an impact in that game and as well as Chase Young early in that game. So you look at the Cowboys' defense, what they did to try and get better. We got Gilmore and Anthony Barr. 49ers get Randy Gregory, um, Chase Young, Hargrave, and add to an already loaded defense. You follow me? You know, they got Fred Warner and uh, Greenlaw and stuff out there. They had T.J. Watt. You can't look at the talent that San Francisco has on that defense. Armstead, Armstead, I'll take over any of our our, our defensive linemen. I, I just would. I, I just, I'm sorry, I just would. Just would. I know somebody sent me an email or, or text or, or some message and said, you know, you're talking about San Francisco's front. You know, they're not as good as you think they are. Like, yes, they are. Yes, they are. They got some players out there. They got some ballers. But be that as it may, what I'm, my, my, what I'm trying to impress upon you is what San Francisco did to build this team versus what the Cowboys have done. We have been doing more <clears throat> addition by separation than actually adding over the course of the last two years. Amari Cooper, we got rid of that guy. We got rid of Amari Cooper. We got rid of Zeke Elliott. We didn't replace him in kind. So for us to fail, honestly, <clears throat> if you honestly and truly looked at this, not through the ESPN eyes that automatically know that the Cowboys are a talking point, so it's easy to say they're a Super Bowl favorite because that sells views. In actual, you don't look and say, team over here is getting bigger and bigger and better and faster and stronger, adding good pieces. Team over here is getting rid of the pieces that they have that are decent, that are underperforming, but they're not replacing them and think that these two things are equal because they're not. But now you have to look at it from the standpoint of Kyle Shanahan is an incredible coach, but for whatever reason, he's having some problems in the big one. 
And it's really nice that I'm not seeing and hearing from all of you 49er fans that talk the talk, trashing me and my team and constantly rubbing my nose in it, that you actually are cockroaches. Because I'm sure I won't hear from you guys ever again. At least I can say the Eagle fans have come back. You know, misery loves company. They've at least come back. You guys, well, bang, bang. I want to listen to how ESPN puts it this morning. I haven't actually seen it, so we'll watch this together on how they equate what happened last night. Yes. Does this defense have any heart? No. They suck. I've been telling you all season, Philly. They shit on you. They shit on you. I messed up, but they did. They did caca on them. Put in place essentially after the legendary Mahomes. Well, let's let's start it over. And our MVP this morning is Dan Olaski. Flew in on a red eye after the game last night to make it back here as he does every year on Super Monday. I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Yes, sir. We will get all your Mahomes stuff as we continue because that's where we opened, obviously. Sure. But here's where we are at this moment. And you were doing the game, I believe, for Australia TV. So, so uh, your perspective on this. Last night was the first night in NFL history with the new overtime rules that were put in place essentially after the legendary Mahomes Allen game. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people critical or at minimum questioning Kyle Shanahan's decision to take the football first when the 49ers won the coin toss in overtime. What do they say? Yeah, major component in why they lose the football game. Going into overtime, we were in the booth and I said, no way that you take the ball first. You want you want to give Kansas City the ball to make sure because what happens is you give the other team another down. Right when they took it, I said, you're giving Mahomes four downs mm -hmm. that you have no shot. You know, yeah, I don't care how tired the defense is because I've heard people say, well, the defense was gassed. Figure out a way to go out there for one more potential stop. And the worst case scenario is Patrick drives them down the field. You get the ball back and then you still have control of the game. You can still at some point if you want go for two. So um, mistake by Kyle Shannon and the 49ers. You've done an, a great number of college games for us. There's a similarity, right? In college overtime, teams always want to go second sure. with the ball because you know exactly what you need. You control the game. And, and that's what the 49ers didn't get. Do you think they got that wrong last night? Yeah, I agree because you got them to fourth down. And so if they mm -hmm. had the ball first, you get them to fourth down, they kick. Right. Yeah. So they kick the they punt back there or they kick the field goal down inside. Then you get the ball with a chance to win. And I think a key point to what Dan said was you also still have control. You can go for two right. if you go down and score. So at the moment, I didn't hate it. Kyle Shanahan seemed to have a good rationale for it. Like it's right. not a, it's not the reason why they lost, yeah. but it is those little edges that you give up. It is a reason why. Yeah. I would they have lost. never given Patrick Mahomes four downs. Mm -hmm. Andy Reid. That's what you do. Right. When you take it first, you give Mahomes four downs. It's your point. They had it. Yeah, I think when you when you hear why he did what he did, again, it made sense. I, I was the same way when they first did Where it. Where did he I say why? Shocked. So let's play it. Let, yeah. Let's play it. So, so you, you're going to hear first Chris Jones, who was on Kansas City side, who was yeah. surprised that the Niners took the ball, and then you will hear Kyle Shanahan's reasoning. Go ahead. They're crazy. They're crazy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because the overtime rules has changed. Mm. That's something we talked about with – you know, none of us have a ton of experience of it, but we went through all the analytics and talked with those guys, and we just thought it would be better. We wanted the ball third. Um, if both teams matched and scored, we wanted to be the ones who had the chance to go win, and um, we got that field goal, so we knew we had to hold them to at least to a field goal, and if, if we did, then we thought it was in our hands after that. Well, let's just make sure it's clear what he's saying there. We don't have a lot of experience. The first two possessions. The new part of the rule is that the, the second team is guaranteed a possession, as Kansas City was last night, even if the Niners had scored a touchdown. If after those two possessions, for example, if the, Niner, the, the Chiefs had kicked a field goal on that drive where they won it, now it is next score wins. So now the Niners would be the first team with the ball with a chance to win without it being matched. That's the thinking. Yeah, two things. One, Kansas City's defense was – Phenomenal the whole game. Right. So to think that you're going to go and have a scoring drive once within a two series stretch is pretty exacerbated when you've really only had your, like your your trick play that was the touchdown outside of that. And the second thing is, I would have gone for it on fourth down then. If if you if the thought was well we wanted the ball first, I would have gone for it. Now 
Uh, you know, you're, you're fourth and goal from the, you know, eight also, I would have blocked Chris. No, you're fourth and four from the nine. You're fourth and four fourth from and four from the nine. Excuse me. Yes. Let's go through that sequence for you because what Dan is talking about is critical. All these yeah. decisions. Look, you want to be an NFL head coach. Yeah. These are now decisions that are going to be questioned until the end of time. You took the ball. You mm -hmm. have a second and four from the nine yard line. You run the ball and get nothing. Then you throw the ball on third down. And mm -hmm. that's the play we just showed you where Chris Jones is unblocked. Inexplicably comes unblocked. He saved three touchdowns last year. Yes, night. he did. But my point is, and then, you, so this is it. This is the third down play. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Jones unblocked. He has to Jennings throw the ball away. That's a, that's a touchdown. Yeah. It's a touchdown if, 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 if Jennings bottom if, 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 if Chris Jones is blocked or just, you know, someone Nudge. gets in his way, Nudge. that's a touchdown. So, yeah. but, so the point of it is, are you saying you think there's an inconsistency in the decisions right. to take the ball first, but then not go for it on that fourth down? If you go for it on fourth, let's go, let's go through it. Right. If you go for it on fourth and four and you don't get it, now Kansas City has the ball very deep in their own territory, but a field goal wins the game. Yeah. Those are the decisions mm -hmm. you're making. Yeah, if you're going to take the ball first and go for it there, or at least try to be aggressive, I think you go for it on fourth down. The truth is this. Kansas City got the ball back in that two-minute drive to end the game, went right down the field. You didn't stop them. They ran out of time. Right, right. They had started to gain momentum and mojo. So if you're Kyle Shanahan and you're thinking, I want the ball first, it's go and score yeah. and then put the pressure on them to have to need a touchdown rather than just a field goal. That, you you see the analytics on your screen. The, the, yeah. you, you said it earlier. One of you guys said it earlier this morning is that if, if – you could also run the ball on third and four. Correct. Yes. Yeah, if you're going to do it that way, that was my mm -hmm. that was one of my big things. Is if you're going to do it that way, you have two downs to get it. So run it on third down, and then you can throw it or run it. Because McCaffrey's your best player. Give the yourself only, a shot the on only that thing. With that, Jeff, is it felt like every big run last night, Kansas City won against San Francisco's defense. You know, like can't every – I was getting texts, why aren't they running the football? Kansas City's defense – was phenomenal. They played play good. But, down but as they're driving down on that drive, sure. McCaffrey is Starting, playing yeah, you're right. well. You're yeah. pushing guys around. They're doing mm -hmm. those things. If you're going to do it that way, that would be my only hiccup to Washington. Or I thought, I, yeah. like for me, I thought, I thought the 49ers would go for it on fourth down only because Patrick Mahomes was what I call, what we say, like in the matrix. Yeah, at that bro, time. He was done. Like there was. The 49ers defense wasn't wasn't stopping anyone, so I figured, okay, they're gonna just go they're gonna just go for it, knowing that their defense wasn't gonna be able to stop. The that. flip side mm -hmm. of that is, I mean, yes, I agree with the thinking, but they did get him to a fourth down. They had him in a bunch of third longs. Yeah, I mean, they were to... this close. And you know something? I'm looking at the that smile is... on your face. Dominique said this morning, you were on your way here from the airport. He said as he rewatched that last drive, go ahead and tell him how you felt for Steve Wilkes. Oh, I felt sorry for him. Because he tried everything. He's zero blitzing. He's zoning. He's dropping eight. He's doing everything. But Patrick Mahomes was on another level. There he you go. At some point in that game. And that's like, it hurts. But it also is like, well, we could have done uh, nothing with that. So <laughs> running the ball. Being in the stadium, like the first half, watching the first half, the note I had written down, Kansas City was completely shell-shocked. Yeah. Their body language was terrible. They were walking on and off the field. Well, we'll leave it there. You guys can watch the rest of that there. But it's safe to say that there's a lot of fallout here and questions about Shanahan and winning the big ones. We'll see. I, I don't see him going anywhere. And it, the sad thing is, as 49er fans, I, I do joke you guys a lot, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be able to rub your face in it the way you've been rubbing my face in the Cowboys' problems. But if this doesn't show all of us Cowboy fans where we are lacking, we don't have dogs. We don't have dogs in the fight. We don't fly around the football like these two. I, I said this morning to my wife, I said, you know, that they're just literally playing on a different level. I said, that game last night was literally like watching Rocky and Apollo Creed just punch after punch after punch. And they're both standing there and taking it and just laying the, just over and over and over again. And... I didn't see anybody being tired or laying down or getting into their feelings because they were having a bad game. Well, we did see Travis Kelsey kind of go off there on Andy Reid. But you see what we're not and where we have to get to be. All right, good people. I hope you have a great day. And um, we will be seeing you guys soon. Peace. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report.
Yeah.